All right, sitting in a whatever kind of squat this is. Wait, is it like a <laughs> whatever the fuck it is. It's my new morning breathing position. Ooh, and this is my new blend of NPFW. Okay, something that hit me on a walk. Uh, we prepare for life everywhere. We, we grasp the principles <laughs> that you need to have a reserve to be able to experience. You have to have an amount to be able to give off to receive. <laughs> Because everything costs something in some, in some way. What I'm talking about, if you were going to the mountains, everybody's going to check their weather out. And you're going to see, shit, 74 could drop to 42 on, the, on a second because the weather shifts. We need to bring the appropriate clothes to be able to survive and thrive in that environment. Not really that crazy. Going to a restaurant, you're going to order food one that you, I hope to God, is because you just love the taste of it, not for any other reason, not for nutrients, not for macros, not for vitamins, not for minerals, not for a fucking diet, keto, and or any other bullshit, because you just enjoy it. You're gonna look at the cost, and you're only gonna order the food, one, that your stomach has the space for, two, that you can digest effectively and assimilate, three, that you can pay for, <laughs> that you can afford. Not really that far-fetched, okay? You're going to move your monies around and invest in these interest accounts and these accounts. You're gonna have all this, you're gonna know every little detail and data point of your bottom line because you need money to go do stuff, to experience some things, to have some freedoms. I'm down with that. But you, for the most part, wouldn't extend yourself beyond what you don't have. Now, going into debt and continue to go into debt, but it's gonna come back on you and we know this and that's fine. Um, we need to move monies around because we have to prepare to send our child through college in 21 years or 18 years or whatever it is. Jesus, you're preparing now for something that's 18 years? How far-fetched, wow, how novel. You'll put gas in the car appropriate for the trip. You'll bring snacks with you. <laughs> Because God forbid you go any amount of time with no fucking food in your mouth. <laughs> My blood sugar. <laughs> so these aren't that far-fetched. These principles I'm talking about are not really that crazy to grasp. But then when I come along <laughs> and I share that you need to move your body up to a level from toes to thumbs greater than anything you would ever experience in life, which is basically taking all those industries, all those sections, all that stuff, even you religious fanatics are preparing for some fucking end doomsday. You're preparing. But when I say you're going to move every single joint, toes to thumbs, to a level, volume level great enough to change you to a level greater than anything you're going to experience in life energetically, not just freaking physically, everything. From the highest amount of love, from the highest amount of crying, from you just, me waking up in the morning, open my eyes, I gotta train greater than that. Me sleeping peacefully, dreaming about badass shit, I need to train greater than that. Me experiencing a fall, moving myself, took 14 hours to move everything, picking something up very heavy, laughing hysterically. I need to train greater than that. And when I express this to you, everyone's just like, Jesus, you know, that sounds like a lot. God, I don't know if I can, I mean, my life, I don't think you understand. I have 40 kids and I have three businesses and I'm a farmer and oh my God, I'm a, I'm a, like, but you'll go into a restaurant and you'll only order food that can fit into your stomach or that you can afford. You'll prepare to invest sending your freaking kid to a university system that should be just dismantled, but you still believe in, but you'll still do it. You'll put on a jacket ex exceeding the weather you're going to experience. But when I say movement, and these forces that you're gonna encounter in life, that's like, what? <laughs> that's off the chain, there's no way it works that way. 168 hours of your week, 60 plus or more sleeping, 108 hours, and you're preparing for 108 hours doing a fucking yoga class three to five times a week? 
even if it was true yoga. Like actual principles of like the source, which would be a whole lifestyle shift anyway, not just some training thing. You're gonna spin at this class, really? And that's gonna prepare you? You're gonna walk the dog for 30 minutes in the morning, seven days a week, and that's gonna prepare you? That's three and a half hours for 108 hours? In no fucking division of life would that ever pan out or work. And you know that, and you would admit it in all these other divisions and industries and everything else. But when it comes to training and rehab, geez, you know, TJ, that's a, that's a little extreme there. I don't know. We need to be talking about recovery time because muscles need time to recover. And we got to talk about rest. And we got to talk about active rest. And we got to move, get sleep before starting to look at where you're fitting in rest in your day. My God. Training preparing your body for the forces of life. You have to exceed it from toes to thumbs. You have to harness this power of failure that we did as babies. Injuries, the body's inability to absorb force, all of them come from this. Just movement capacity, that is training. Now, in your defense, there's a lot of shit out there being, you're being exposed to. My God, even just the suggestion thing on Instagram, where they suggest, I block more things from that a suggestion thing because it's just clown ass trainers and clown ass rehab people, and clown ass chiropractors and clown PTs and clown energy people and clown yogis, clown all this stuff, showing these things that you sit there, you don't feel empowered, you feel like it's out of your hands or it's training exists in a building or with a special piece of equipment that only this place has or you have to be under the watchful eye of this expert that's credentialed in whatever the fuck or you have to get a membership at this place because you need the you need the crew and the support of the gang at the CrossFit Center like my god it's just getting so bad now so bad beyond that then of course you would think yeah, training is going to the gym three to five days a week not even close Training is doing my little program that I have for two hours that I paid the science guy on Instagram because he does all these things that show how strong he is. And I do my training program through him. Training is going to my physical therapist because my insurance covers it. Training is doing the exercise because my chiropractor knows because he uses these words like parasympathetic and neurology and stenosis and showed me on an x-ray why these businesses just need to be gone. Training is all day, every day, every single thing you do training is inputting into your life through movement from toes to thumbs to a level greater than what you're going to experience in your life you have to have an account built up greater than what you're going to draw out everywhere in your life you apply this and you believe in it <laughs> except <laughs> with training and rehab that's just too far-fetched uh, that's just too much tj and i'm not talking about sitting like this tj i can't sit like that i, I don't know it can happen in your bed. It can happen with you just laying there. You stimulating your intention, your movement is driven by you. No gadgetry, no equipment, no hacks, no special place. It has to be able to be done anytime, any place, anywhere. Your gym is everywhere. Your weight are your reps and uh, your weight is your intention, and the reps and sets. to a point of changing it. You could change yourself in one repetition if it was intentful enough, if it was a high le a le enough level of emotion. I'm not there yet. It's possible. <laughs> but again, the rules of life, the, the laws of life, the principles of life that you apply in every area of, of how you live, in every area of how you run your family or how you guys your mission statements and all this shit, your religious views, your financial views, your nourishment views, your social views, <laughs> your education views, every belief you have, you, you, you share exactly what I'm talking about. But then when I say it, it's like, ooh, geez, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> that seems pretty, it's, it's the law. <laughs> and if you break universal laws and natural laws, that's why the only thing I believe in the only thing I got back and trust because they always work. They're always gonna be true. They're always gonna work, sit there and, and move forward. They apply to all of us all the time. I like going to bed knowing that I'm following something that's always going to work. <laughs> I like 
interacting with this engagement with this world and it actually like kind of likes to keep me around because it maybe understands it breaking me down into my basic elements and putting me back in the earth and recycling me keep him here he's actually helping this whole thing he's actually <laughs> abiding by the contractual agreement that i signed when i came out of my mom's okay something to think about principles are principles ah every inch of your life you have to apply them not just when you do finances not just when you wear a coat and gloves or you dress for appropriate weather everything it has to be across the board that's why from the video i said yesterday from the second you wake up to when you go to sleep you're applying principles across every facet of your life not just taking the picture of the fancy plate and then living some different way not just you get it have a good day